Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. I really like all kinds of watches, and at all budget levels. Often, for a particular style of watch, that style may dictate the price range I consider. A couple of years ago, I wanted a diver watch. I didn't want to spend a lot of money, since I wasn't sure if this style was right for me. So I decided to buy a good quality but low-priced model. I checked out the usual suspects. Seiko, Citizen, and Orient. A couple hundred dollars was my budget for this watch at the time. So I bought this Orient Blu-ray 2 Diver, what I like to call the Humble Diver. I'd like to tell you about it now. Firstly, Orient may be an unfamiliar watch brand to you. It was to me back then. You may know the name for their Bambino line of low-priced mechanical dress watches. The origin of Orient Watch Company dates back to 1901, when Shigoro Yoshida opened a wholesale shop in Tokyo, Japan. Initially, the shop sold imported pocket watches, and then in 1912, the business was expanded by producing gold wristwatch cases. In 1920, Toyo Tokei Manufacturing was established, originally producing table clocks, but it wasn't until 1936 that the company started producing wristwatches. The company continued successfully until a few years after World War II when it was shut down. In 1950, the wristwatch manufacturing company was reborn and just one year later, the name of the company was changed to Orient Watch Company Limited. That was also the year that the first Orient Star went on sale. In 1956, the Dynamic went on sale and in 1960, the Royal Orient became available. Some other significant Orient watches include the Grand Prix 100 in 1964, the Fineness for its time, the world's thinnest automatic wristwatch with day and date calendar function in 1967, and then in 1970, the 10-beat. Orient Watch is now a brand name of the Seiko Epson Corporation, and Seiko Epson is a part of the Seiko Group. So when you buy an Orient Watch, you are, in essence, buying a Seiko, albeit one from their lower tier lines. However, Orient manufactures all its movements in-house in Japan. Orient primarily markets mechanical watches, both automatic and hand-winding, but it also produces quartz, solar, and radio-controlled models. My experience is that the majority of Orient watch models are not available in the U.S., but popular models can be obtained from, for example, Long Island Watch online. Other Orient pieces can be obtained from a variety of Japanese websites. For someone looking for their first diver watch on a budget, the Blu-ray 2 is difficult to beat. Its main competitor is the Seiko SKX007, although the Orient has an upgraded movement compared to the SKX. The Citizen NY2300 Automatic Diver is another similar watch. The dial is a deep blue, almost iridescent. I like the way the light plays off it as you move your wrist. And if you look at the dial with a loop, you can see it has a brush surface, a subtle but cool feature. There's also a black dial version of this watch. The dial has applied indices, minimal text, and a date window at 3 o'clock. The Orient logo marquee at top, the letter O, with a lion on either side. It's rather small and hard to see, but attractive and tasteful. Beneath the crest, it says Orient and Automatic in script. An applied logo is unusual for a watch in this price range, and it really classes up the watch. At 6 o'clock, it says Water Resist, and below that, 200M. I like Resist rather than Resistance. That seems more special, if not unusual. The day date is shown in black and sharply printed text on a white background, making it easy to read. Both the day and the date are surrounded by a beveled chrome frame. I think I would have preferred one frame over both, but that's a minor quibble. Days are in black except for Sunday, which is shown in red, which is the tradition on many watches. 
Both the day and the date are set via the single screw-down crown. Prior versions of this watch had a pusher at 2 o'clock that controlled the date. The hour and minute hands are sword style with applied loom. The seconds hand has a red tip pointer with a small amount of loom on the tip, which is actually barely visible in the dark. There are trapezoidal shaped markers at 12, 6, and 9, and no markers at 3 o'clock where the date window is located. These markers and the round hourly markers are filled with loom. A 120 click unidirectional bezel with scallop edges and a loom pip at 12 o'clock is easy to grasp and turn. Unidirectional bezel travel is appropriate for a dive watch since this underestimates the remaining time of your air supply, which is safer. You wouldn't want to overate, overestimate the air supply caused by, say, an accidental nudge to the bezel since you might find yourself still underwater when the air supply is gone. The bezel has a solid feel and there's no play. This is another surprising feature of this inexpensive diver. The first 15 minutes of the bezel have minute markings, thereafter markings at every five minute interval. The Ray 2 has a mineral crystal that is said to be hardened. My experience over the last two years is that the crystal has worked fine, and looking at it closely, I see no scratches or cracks. One of the hallmarks of this watch is the very bright and long lasting loom. Once charged, it can go on for hours, maintaining legibility. Since both the hour markers and hour minute hands are applied with loom, reading the time is easy in the dark. I'd say that the loom on this Ray 2 watch is the equal of that of my Tudor Black Bay Blue. The case and bracelet are stainless steel. The diameter is 41.5 millimeters, thickness is 13 millimeters, and the lug width is 22 millimeters. A 22 millimeter lug width is on the wider side, but it suits this watch just fine. And fortunately, it's a standard width, so finding alternative bracelets and straps should be easy. Lug to lug is a mere 46 millimeters, so between that dimension and the curved lugs, the watch hugs the wrist. The watch has a 200 meter water resist, which makes it suitable for recreational diving. I haven't dived with this watch, but I have worn it in the pool and in several oceans with no issue. A screw down crown with Orient logo surrounded by crown guards adds to the water resistance of the watch, as does the screw down case back with engraved pair of dolphins. This is a nice touch. I like dolphins. Having a signed crown is also a great feature on an inexpensive watch. The short, slightly curved lugs do help the watch fit on smaller wrists, and both the top and bottom lugs flow nicely into the case. The overall aesthetic is pleasingly diver-esque. The bracelet is cheap, with hollow end links, but it looks okay and, and should work fine. It's a three-link design, the center is polished, two sides are brushed, and the bracelet adjustments are via pins, and it has a push-button deployment closure on the clasp. I decided to go with the rubber strap, and am pleased with that decision. The Blu-ray 2 uses an in-house Orient F6922 automatic movement. This caliber is capable of hacking and hand-winding. Hacking just means that the second hand stops when the crown is pulled out to set the time to allow for precise time setting. Previous versions of this watch used the 46943 automatic movement. It was supposedly reliable, but lacked the hacking and hand winding features. The 22 Joule F6922 has a 40 hour power reserve and is one of Orion's newer calibers. On the time grapher, I get plus 6 seconds per day, which is amazingly good for an inexpensive watch like this. And a 276 degree amplitude shows that the movement is working quite strongly. 0.5 beat error tells me that the swing of the balance wheel is just about not quite even on both sides of the swing. 0.5 is still good, but perhaps it could be a little bit better. Again, this is an inexpensive watch, so that's not bad. So, in summary, there are several diver watches that compete at the low end. Typically, 
These are from Seiko, Citizen, and Orient, the major brands. I'm only talking about mechanical watches here, not quartz or fashion watches. Choosing one of these really is a matter of personal taste, since they're all about the same in terms of quality and price. Some may be slightly better, such as the Orient having more features than the Seiko SKX, but if you don't care about hacking or hand winding, and prefer the look of the Seiko or its heritage, well, you make the choice. The Orient is an excellent choice for your first diver. It was my first diver and it hasn't disappointed me yet. I've taken it in several oceans, in several pools, and in several showers. If you enjoyed this video and want to be alerted of new content when it's uploaded, kindly hit the subscribe button. I'd be honored if you did. As usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.